We're here at Cardinal Huntington Beach, Cardinal Academy of Huntington Beach, with Mrs. Van Aspen, the school director, and Mrs. Weber, the third grade teacher. Welcome. Thank you very much. Ladies, we're here to talk a little bit more about uh, the Cardin curriculum and education at the third grade level and what it accomplishes and uh, what type of uh, comprehensive education that these third graders get. Well, here at Cardin Academy of Huntington Beach, we really stress those basics. They're coming into third grade, we're looking for them to know their phonetics, we're looking for them to have basic comprehension. As we continue through the curriculum during the year, the children do a lot of different activities. We work a lot with social studies and science. Um, I really believe that children need to experience their education. So we do a lot of different kinds of activities for our, our um, social studies right now. Yeah. We're studying Native Americans. So the children are making a book. So they start with a, a title page, so they have an idea of what's going to be in their book. They make a map of the different tribes of the United States. Mm -hmm. And as we encounter each one, we add a stamp to show where we're, we're working. Mm -hmm. The children also will eventually compare all of the different tribes. So we know the differences between what they wear and what they, where they lived and what kinds of foods they eat. Currently, we've been working with the Iroquois. So we talked, we've been reading about the Iroquois. So we have a, a nice mm -hmm. presentation. And then we talk about what they eat, where they live, what kind of housing they had, um, what's special about the tribe. So in the Iroquois case, they used um, wampum as a form of exchange, of monetary exchange. So there's type of fees. So the children made up a, a, a program for themselves that if I had all the wampum I wanted, what could I buy? So we pretended we were Indians and we determined mm -hmm. what it is that an Indian might want to buy. Mm -hmm. So we've made this. We've talked about that the Iroquois also are really special people as far as um, agriculture and that they grew. So we learned about the three sisters as well. So we learned that they, corn, beans, and squash were their big things. So we do a lot of these hands-on type activities so the children get to experience as well as learn about it just on, not just on the page. Now, in the three sisters, uh, the, the, so just for some people to know and understand that, it's an interesting aspect. Could tell us, tell us in particular what that, what the wisdom was of well, actually growing crops in this fashion. The whole point of, with the, oh, excuse me, hers is a little bit caught here. Um, with the three sisters, they, the Indians, because they were fish, they used fish as well, that would become their fertilizer. So they would plant the three seeds together with their fish to, in order to ensure that they had a nice base of their crop. And as we later learned in the United States, you have to rotate your crops or you use up all your soil. You use all the nutrients up in your soil. So this was our way of blending science with our social studies. And the, the very fact that there were the wisdom of the way the Iroquois used to do this, I have a little bit of a background in it, is the fact that each plant that um, certain plants bring certain nutrients to the mm -hmm. soil, certain plants deplete the soil. Well, every one of these that uh, is depleted, the other plant replaced. So Correct. between all three, you had a complete, you didn't have to rotate crops, and, and, the, and the soil never wore out. Correct. And we also learned that the Indians were very conscious of the fact that natural resources are limited, and they only took what they needed. They didn't go out and just slaughter the whole herd. We only took what we needed because we knew we needed them again later. Right. And we also talk about the fact that the um, uh, Europeans came over and our concepts were different, and how the Indians thought everything belonged to everyone, the land wasn't singly owned. Mm -hmm. And so we discuss all those kinds of things and we have really nice discussions. The really great thing about third graders is third graders start to have opinions and they want to share. So it's really nice that we're able to have a real mm -hmm. discussion when we're talking about our science and social studies. The children also realize that there is a time that you need to sit quietly and you need to work quietly so that you have some independence study time. Now, tell me why you're able to read such sophisticated uh, social studies books. Oh, it's it's all because of the basis that they start here at Carver Academy of Huntington Beach. We start in kindergarten. Our kindergartners are learning. They're reading by the time they get first grade. They continue to build on those bases. We, in third grade, continue to do word study. We're looking to see that we know our phonetic sounds so that when we encounter a word we don't know, we can sound it out. We can look for context clues. We want to be able to be not only good readers, but that helps us when we write as well. So if I understand how to read the word, what the written word says, and I understand the meaning of the word, then I can use it somewhere else. So Mrs. Van Aston, tell us a little bit about this and the overall philosophy. So what I'm hearing is in the third grade, there's once again the building on the previous foundation of the phonetic sounds, 
there's a reinforcement that the children really understand and there's no mistakes with those sounds. And then in the third grade, there's a great expansion of vocabulary and comprehension. To, to in our four-year-old program and in our kindergarten program, students learn the consonants mm -hmm. and they learn the vowels. And uh, by the end of kindergarten, they can read a couple hundred or more words. And then in first grade, they continue building on words that would be the short vowel sounds and then other sounds that they don't know are just exceptions. They just learn. O-U-G-H-T says off, and then we have a whole list of specific way of learning how to read more, these more difficult words. And then by the time they have entered third grade, they have been, they are fluent readers, right? They have really nice frequency, uh, fluency when we're reading. We um, do, uh, to continue to work with those sounds, we want to reinforce everything that we know already, mm -hmm. and then we continue to expand on it. Vocabulary is very big in third grade because as you continue to go year after, the future years, you have to have that basis of vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And so we, we do a vocabulary every week. We have 10 new words we learn every week. But that vocabulary isn't just a vocabulary list. We learn new words in social studies, in science, in math. We are constantly being inundated with new ideas. So every subject reinforces the next. Correct. And if children aren't reading, then it deters from their math. If I give you a word problem and you can't read it, you're not going to be able to do the math problem. You're not going to be able to solve it. So comprehension is key to everything that they're going to do from here on out. Now I see we're sitting at a learning table. Sometimes we call it a teaching table. You have group lessons, the entire 20 in the room, but you also have smaller groups of six or eight. Would you explain the difference between those lessons? When I do a group lesson, such as with reading, um, I'm looking to help reinforce more at the smaller level with the children so that they get the individualized attention so that we can ask specific questions without losing the whole classroom. Um, as you can see on my board, we have lots of seat work to keep you busy. <laughs> well, tell, explain the seat work here. Now, well, what, what, what is seat, this for? This seat work is, is when the children come in in the morning, I ask the children to please sit down quietly, get started with your work. Um, we, every day we do a daily edit, so we reinforce our reading and writing. So mm -hmm. we're looking for commas, spelling errors, that type of thing. We do a small daily language activity every day. They have a spelling book that offers them both language and spelling um, instruction that they can do independently. We practice of our cursive writing, which has become a lost art. Mm -hmm. And here at Carden, we really stress that the children need to know cursive writing. We have geography that we do every day. We ask one or two questions of geography. This week we're working with um, understanding maps and what a map key is. Um, we have a class book which reinforces work that we've already read so that the children can go back. We've already discussed it. We've already read it. They can go back and do this page independently. And then when they come up to the reading table, we grade it together. We go back okay, over right. it. Tell me a little bit about this list here. Is this list to remind you? That was just to remind me and to remind the students what it is the expectation is for the day. So in other words, the students actually, this is an interesting thing that I was uh, a little bit astounded with when I first came into a Cardin classroom, is that this list is for the students, they know to look up and read it. Mm -hmm. It actually starts in the second grade, I believe, or does it start in first? Second. Second, second grade. grade. And then they actually follow right down the list and they can read and understand and follow these directions without being told. Correct. And it keeps organization in the classroom so that if you have a small group up here that you're working with, these children know that they can work independently. They know that if they have a question, they can ask their neighbor. If they still can't solve it, they can just hold it until my group is finished and then I'll be happy to help them. But they need to try to problem solve first. We're, we're problem solvers, we're not problem makers. <laughs> we